In this tutorial, we will add the C-sharp code to highlight a game object at the runtime on mouse hover. In the previous tutorial, we added the select and highlight materials and a tag in the Unity editor. And now we will add the script. Let's create the C-sharp script. Open the scripts folder, right click and select create C-sharp script. Let's rename the script as select. Select our script game object and drag the select script file to attach it. Double click the select file to open it in your code editor. Let's start by adding the event systems namespace. We will use this class later to check if the pointer is over a game object. Then I will create two public variables to hold the selection and highlight materials we added in the previous tutorial. I will create two private variables to hold the game object material before assigning the highlight and the selection materials to it. We store the original material of the object so we can assign it back after the highlight or the selection is over. I will also create two private variables to hold the transform of the highlighted or the selected game object. And finally, I will add a raycast variable or object to use it to detect when the mouse is over a game object. We don't need the start method, so I will delete it. In the update method, let's add the part that handles highlighting the game object when the mouse is over it. Raycast is a very important tool in Unity. It allows you to create a ray going from the camera to a particular point on the screen and returns the objects hit by that way. So we can cast a ray from the camera towards the mouse position and check the returned object. If the object returned contain the selectable tag we created in the previous tutorial, then it is the object we need to be highlighted. Let's create a ray variable or object. Array is an infinite line starting at an origin and going in some direction. We use the main method on the camera to get the first active camera in the scene. And the screen point to ray method returns array going from the camera through a screen point. This method takes a vector 3 as parameter representing the position on the screen. The input dot mouse position returns the current mouse position in pixel coordinates as a vector 3. We pass the mouse position as the position parameter for this way. We will use the event system to check if the pointer is over a game object so that we can avoid detecting our user interface objects. We also use the raycast method from the physics class to check if the ray in the direction of the mouse hit a game object. The raycast method takes two parameters, the ray object we created here, and the second parameter, we pass the raycast hit object we created there. And the raycast method will set value for it depending on what the ray hits. So this if statement check if the pointer or the mouse is over a game object and if the raycast has hit something. Inside the if statement, we get the transform of the raycast hit and assign it to the highlight object we created here. This will hold the transform of the game object that potentially may need to be highlighted when the mouse or the pointer is over it. Let's check if the tag of the highlighted object is the tag we set to the loaded model in the previous tutorial. The name of the tag is selectable. And also, if the highlighted game object is not the same as the selected object, because if the object is already selected, we don't need to highlight it when the mouse is over it. We will handle the selection code later. If these two conditions are not met, then this is not the object we will be interested in highlighting, 
and can just drop the transform of the game object from the highlight variable by assigning it to a value of null. If the hit object passes these criteria, we will check if its original material is not the same as our highlighted material. We get the mesh renderer component of the highlight transform object to get the original material and then compare it to the highlighted material that we created in the Unity editor in the previous tutorial. If the object material is not the same as our temporarily highlighted material, we will first store the object's original material so we can put it back after the highlight is over, and then assign the highlight material to that game object. And at the beginning of each frame, we can reset the status of the highlighted game object to its original status, just in case the mouse or the pointer is no longer over it. If the mouse is still over it, the object will be highlighted when it passes through this block of code. In this tutorial, we added the C-sharp code responsible for highlighting the game object that has a selectable tag and is under the mouse or the pointer. In the next tutorial, we will add the block of code responsible for selecting the game object on the mouse click.